whoa, whoa, whoa. Just, oh, shit. <laughs> you're jumping right in there. Are you doing the germ? Is that what you're doing? <laughs> you want to hit him no, with the wall? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Just because he's not here uh, doesn't you mean that we can put his catchphrases. You know what time it is. You know what time it is. You oh, know, you know what, what time it is. All right. Oh, you have Peapod's jumping in on this. There we go. Hey. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Uh, we are back, everybody. Uh, this is going to be a weird one. Um, we started recording an episode, and uh, due to some form of miscommunication between all of us, uh, we had to stop. <clears throat> so we're going to kind of Frankenstein this together. So this is like, we haven't recorded in a few weeks because uh, we had to be in Jersey and Philly for uh, our Mania show. All three of us were there. A lot of travel, a lot of shit involved. Uh, it was about, what, eight-hour drive for us? Kelly, yeah, pod. yeah, wasn't it like 10 there? <laughs> it was like yeah, uh, nine ish, nine ish hours. Mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm, somehow mm -hmm. we ended up getting two extra hours added on because somebody called us in the middle while we were using my GPS and I missed a turn. Yeah, so that turned into a whole fucking thing, but yeah, Philly was cool. Um, uh, Jersey was cool, show went great. Um, we got some cheesesteaks. Oh, Went yeah. took the the dog downtown. Saw the Liberty Bell. They, they these guys ran up the Rocky stairs. I ran up the Rocky stairs. Yep. Yeah, it was a that. it was a good old time. But uh, yeah, so this is going to be kind of weird. We're just going to kind of glue this together because we did half an episode and had to stop. So uh, you'll you'll probably notice this is going to be a bit of a Frankenstein situation. Uh, so we're just going to kind of piece it together. But uh, our main movie we're going to be talking about. Uh, it's going to be just came to shutter, but we we wanted to talk about it before because her and I went and saw it in the theaters, but mm -hmm. we wanted it to get kind of out there more to the masses before we did a spoiler episode. So we wait for it to come to shutter. Uh, but we're going to be talking late night with the devil a movie. Uh, I think we both very, very much enjoyed and it seems like it's uh, getting some universal praise besides a few detractors here and there. So, yeah, that's that's what we're going to be getting at. Uh, so, yeah, enjoy this weird piece together fucked up ass episode that's probably going to be a big old pain in peapod's neck <laughs> sorry pod sorry pod <laughs> hey it wasn't my fault it was it was a call you know shit happened mm. shit happened mm. life happened it got in the way but here we are here we are uh, talking about movies so life uh finds a way life yeah. finds a way yeah in the, <laughs> the words of the immortal jeff goldblum mr frost himself Life uh, finds a way. And when she says it's not her fault, in, the, in his words as well, well, that's a huge pile of shit. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> We're going to discuss uh, some of our favorite underappreciated creature features that you may or may not have seen. Some of these are my favorite. Some of them, I wouldn't call them my favorite, but there were ones that I enjoyed that I think are lesser known that were, you know, worth mentioning. Yeah. There's a couple stuff that we, are my favorite. So. Stuff we see we enjoyed, think maybe you might enjoy too. Uh, trying to change it up a little bit, have some fun with it. I don't know, the first one, I've always liked this one. Actually, I, I own it. Uh, Grabbers, Irish movie. This one's a really fucking fun one. Um... Basically, you know, uh, a fishing village. Somebody thinks they caught like a sea creature and they kind of fucking did. They caught the sea creature and it ends up, you know, just destroying the whole city. But the funny thing is this movie, this movie is very much like a Shaun of the Dead-esque sort of, you know, horror comedy straight up. Like it doesn't take itself seriously. It's fucking hilarious. Um, the weakness of the monster, though, is drunk people. So they're sending out like their drunkest person to go out and fight this monster and shit. I don't know. It gets really fucking funny. Chris, have you seen this one? It's on Shudder right now, I believe, is where I watched it. But yeah, I, I own a copy of it. Um, I believe I bought it from our old family video scheming days. Um, but yeah, I think <laughs> I did the exact same thing to get it. Um, I don't think I ever got around to watching it, though. Uh, you've recommended it a few times to me, uh, I, but I haven't watched it now. It's funny, dude. It's a funny, fun uh, sea creature one. Like, um, the sea creature will break into all these little leech-like things with these little, like, sucker faces and shit. And the big one's, like, this big, you know, and it's got this big sucker hole in the middle here. See? <laughs> kind of, like, bites off heads. I, dude, it's a it's really a, it's fun It's a hectocatalyst? It's a hectocatalyst. <laughs> it's a hectocatalyst. That's actually a medically correct term. <laughs> it's 
squid penis. Octopus penis. <laughs> Octopus penis. Octocotylus. Yes. Don't ask why I know that. <laughs> Strange fact you and I have never forgot. <laughs> that's like <laughs> that's that's like real complicated word for it to be stuck with us for so many years. But that was a weird night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I'll, I'll talk All about right, a movie. Yeah. Go on. <laughs> um, this one was a pile of dog shit, and I'm not even sure I would consider it a movie. <laughs> um, when I went to Ray on Letterbox and give it its half star, um, that's all anyone's ever given it. Um. On Tubi, it was called a big freaking snake, but when it's <laughs> when its credits rolled, it was big fucking snake. Okay. This wasn't really a movie. Um, <laughs> it clocked in a total of forty six minutes. I didn't realize that when I put it on. A uh, good sixteen minutes of that is B roll and like stock footage of just snakes that they just use to pad the runtime. Uh, at one point, I'm pretty sure they used a like 3d rendered screensaver of a cobra just lunging and they let it play like three times in a row um <laughs> it's it was beyond awful the guy who directed this um what's his name dustin ferguson he has directed 205 films um all of them look to be dog shit everything from cocaine cougars to amityville in the hood um, he made <laughs> Nemesis 5, which I actually really enjoy, the first Nemesis movie. Um, Night of the Clown. It's so just like a bunch of, bunch of trash. Uh, this one was utterly horseshit. It, it, it starts with a giant snake going through downtown and like dropping trucks off buildings. You're like, all right, this might be fun. It might go somewhere. That never happens. It's also how it ends, but that never happens. <laughs> There's no actual big snakes. Um, there's little tiny rubber snakes and there's little CGI snakes and none of them look the same. Um, it, I hated everything about this movie. <laughs> At 46 minutes, it felt like an eternity. I'd rather pound my balls flat with a hammer than ever watch this again. Fuck this movie, half star. And I only give it a half <laughs> star because I don't think we're allowed to give it. Can we give zero stars? Zero fucking stars. Fuck that movie. Big freaking snake on Tubi. <laughs> Don't bother. It was that bad. Okay. Jesus. You know me, like, dude. I put it on expecting just like a cheese fest, almost like I, I, I wanted to kind of turn my brain off and just have one of those, like, when you watch a Sharknado or a, mm -hmm. like a lava shark or you know, croca, croca octopus or whatever, you know, whatever sci-fi yeah. channels pumping out that week. And I kind of thought that's what I was getting myself into, and it was not. Um, <laughs> this thing sucked all sorts of balls. Um, don't touch it. No. All right. All right. Um, so I'm going to assume the next one I'm going to talk about is more up to speed of what you were fucking looking for. <laughs> I am going to talk about the Howling Three, the yeah. one that takes <laughs> the one that takes place in Australia. <laughs> uh, this one came out in 1987. You can watch it on uh, Tubi. You can watch all of the Howlings on Tubi, actually. That's, watching this one today made me want to like just dive into the series because th this one's utterly ridiculous. They get, like like that one's really <laughs> weird, but they get really fucking weird when they get later. I, there's one of them later on down the line that is like a biker werewolf musical. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, go on. But um, yeah, there's um, there's some scientists. They find some evidence of werewolves in the Soviet Union, and then some some werewolves in Australia. So going to going there to research the werewolves in Australia, they're, you know, they're looking, they're looking for them. Um, <laughs> at the same time, there's a girl, she's from this town called Flo. Oh, what, what the fuck was her name? I just watched it too. Like Jacoba, Jacoa, Jaboga, <laughs> something. I don't remember her name. Jacoba. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's been a while, but she's a, um, she's, a lycanthrope, <laughs> I believe. It, would it be a lycanthrope if it's not wolf? If I remember correctly, it, it has more to do with kangaroos because they, they have pouches in their marsupials. No, actually, it goes into the uh, Tasmanian wolf, which is now extinct, which was okay. the... Sure. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, this girl, like... They're shooting a horror movie, and just out of the blue, this guy named Donnie Donnie Matthews or something is just like, "Hey, 
you want to be in my movie? You're perfect. So, like, you know, he gets her in the movie, starts banging her and shit. And then he notices, like, she keeps throwing out fucking hints that she's a werewolf. Like, she just keeps throwing out things like, that's not how they change. Because she's in the in the uh, horror movie that they're, that they're filming. She's like, yeah, but that's not how it happens. He's like, what are you, a werewolf? She's like, yeah. So she just, like, bluntly tells him. <laughs> So, like, you know, they bang, and then he notices she's real fuzzy, and she's got, like, a stitched-up pouch right here. But shit gets fucking weirder. There are nuns. There are marsupial nun where Sure are. With where Muppet. marsupials? They are also hunting the girl. Everybody seems to be hunting this girl werewolf, but then it gets into this weird, um, like... There's some shit going on, like, indigenous Australia with the werewolves. I don't know, it gets kind of confusing, but, like, the best part is, <laughs> um, the Jacoba, or the girl and the dude and Donnie, they end up getting pregnant, and she has a little fucking wear baby that, like, you know, they show, like, the whole birthing process is pretty fucked up, it comes out, and it's, it's kind of cute, <laughs> and then it, like, climbs into her pouch, <laughs> This movie's fucked, man. It, it's sure it's a hoot, though. I, I would recommend it if you're looking for like a fucked up, fun, like what the hell sort of movie. Like this is it. Even the little like marsupial wear baby <laughs> had like. It reminded me of this toy that you could buy in the eighties. I don't fucking remember which one it was, but it had eyes like that drunken gremlin in Gremlins Two. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know. Fun movie. Good practical effects. effects. Um, yeah. If, if you're not looking for a werewolf movie, but wear somethings, <laughs> Howling 3. Yeah, um, I've seen Howling 3. I'm a big fan of it. Um, it's been a few uh, a few years uh, <laughs> since I've seen it. I just remember it being the most ridiculous one that I really enjoyed. Yeah. It's, um, it's yeah. Incredible. Yeah, it's it's a it's a it's a fun time. I definitely recommend it. If I remember correctly, I give it like four out of five. Um, everything I, I about it is it like three and a half. Every, everything about it is just really weird and off kilter. Um, the Australianness of it really really shines through. Um, yeah, definitely would rec recommend the marsupials. Yeah. Yep. Tubi. Tubi. Of course it is. What you got? What's your next one? What you thinking? So my next one, <laughs> this was a weird one. Uh, it's directed by a brother team, Mar Mark Polanya and John Polanya. Um, they are known for making um, straight to VHS horror from the eighties up until like now. They're still making all kinds of weird shit. Remember when I talked about Cocaine Shark? That was yeah. them. Um, this okay. is movie called Hallucinations. Um, they also made the Splatter Fire movies in the feeder. The feeder movies that's what they're most known for. Um, oh, okay. Hallucinations was a very strange fucking movie. Um, it starred three people. Two of them looked identical. The two brothers, they look exactly the fucking same. They both have, they both look like Pedro from um, uh, Napoleon Dynamite, but in like Jeffrey Dahmer glasses. They both have the mustache and everything and the, the comb over. It was really hard to differentiate the two. But what you have is a, um, <laughs> Two brothers that live together. One is very slow and dim-witted, and they make it a point to point that out um, every chance that they could. And the other uh, is, you know, like you know, the big brother is annoyed by the little brother. And then there's this friend who's just always there, even though they don't seem to be friends and don't get along. Then a lot of times they're not in the same room and they talk shit about each other. This all takes place like their mom's off on some work trip, and it's just these three people in a house. And they start all <laughs> having like their own hallucinations of all these like crazy violent acts and like things happen like chainsaws coming to life and killing the pets, bag men coming in with knives, uh, decapitations, demon babies jumping around, chewing on shit. Um, it was not a well-made movie in any sense of the word. Um, it also, when I played it, it looks like they were playing a VHS on a TV and then filming the TV to record it. <laughs> like it just looked like that. And there was like this really horrible, just like ambient overdubbed or, or noise of just going on in the background. But with that being said, this thing really went off the fucking rails and was a wild ass goddamn movie. Um, I did end up really enjoying it. It took a little while to get going. 
Uh, it's no budget. Like you got to be the kind of guy who can enjoy like a J.R. Bookwalter movie or you know something along those lines with Tempe movies, mm-hmm. something like that. Um, but I I would recommend it. Uh, in the end, I do believe I gave it three and a half. Yeah, I gave it three and a half. Um, weird fucking flick, man. Really weird fucking mm-hmm. flick. I don't think I've ever seen anything like it, and probably with good reason. Uh, so that was <laughs> hallucinations. On two hallucinations. Okay, okay. Hallucinations. No, I have never seen that one. I don't. I might have. The name kind of sounds familiar, but it might have been just something I just passed up, just flipping through Tubi. Who knows? Yeah. Um. The next one I'm going to talk about is a pretty decent one that's on Netflix. Um. 2017. This is the Ritual. Yes. Um. Yeah. Uh. Directed by David Bruckner. Who you know from the Nighthouse, Southbound, the new Hellraiser, the Signal, VHS 1985, VHS. Um, yeah, he's got some pretty solid movies, and this one is no different. Uh, this one follows some guys. There's a group of four friends. Well, originally it starts out with five friends, and one is killed in a pretty shitty accident in the beginning of the movie. And in his memory, they all want to go hiking in Sweden. Well, During their hike, of course, they get, you know, they think going through the forest will get them to where they want to go quicker because somebody in their group, like, really hurts his ankle and they don't want to fucking, you know, take the long trail. So they go off trail through the woods. Big fucking mistake. Um, Very quickly, they realize they're being hunted by something and they're being hunted by something that is not human. Something very big and very fast. And it's like fucking hanging them from trees. And it's fucked up. But, um, yeah, this movie, this movie is fucking dope. Like, there's some really good kills in it. The monster looks sweet. I'm not going to tell you what it is. But, I mean, without giving away more than I might have already, which I don't think I did too much. But, um, yeah, I, I highly recommend this one. I'd give it about a three and a half. Chris, you said you've seen it. You said hell yeah when I brought it up. Uh, this movie is way up my alley. This is some cosmic horror, um, yeah, kind of yeah. old school shit. Um, yeah, I really like David Bruckner and what he's been doing. Um, a lot of people shit on the new Hellraiser. Aside from the person that stars in it, I thought it was a very entertaining movie. I really um, enjoyed it. Yeah, I, I like the new Hellraiser. I'm, I'm surprised mm-hmm. we never did an episode about it when it came out, but I think there was just too much going on at the time. <laughs> um, yeah. I really enjoyed the creature design at the end. The monster in this is very cool. In fact, it almost mm-hmm. made my list uh, that we were talking about mm-hmm. later, but I didn't want to, t- I want to talk more about maybe lesser known shit. Um, and that's yeah. this is like a, a Netflix movie uh, that a lot of people, a lot of people have seen. Uh-huh. Um, I, I was on the fence for doing it for that reason. I was like, yeah, maybe this is a little too well known, but I had never seen it before this. So I was like, you know what? Fuck it. Let's, let's watch it. So. Well, this is, I mean, this isn't part of my list. It's just what the, what we've been watching. Yeah. But uh, I would give it, um, I would give it four, four out of five. I really enjoyed it. Um, there is some really good um, drama in it too. And mm-hmm. character building, you know, the, you really start mm-hmm. feeling for the people involved. There, there's a lot more just a monster movie going on. So yeah, very yeah. cool. Very cool. Uh, definitely has like a more old school vibe. Uh, one of the yeah. better movies you can see on Netflix. Yeah, like, uh, there's some scenes, even though this was made prior to, like, Yellow Jackets and shit, but, like, the whole, like, cabin in the woods and, like, dream sequences and shit kind of remind me of certain things in Yellow Jackets. I love that series. I can't can't wait till that comes back. Yeah, I can completely say that. Yeah. What you got? Oh, what's it's your turn. I just went out with the ritual. Oh, yeah. What you got? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, so for my next movie, I'm going to talk about, um, this one was a lot of fun. Um, this is probably, um, a favorite one I've seen recently. Uh, it's called demon wind. There's no wind of demons in it. Wind. Wind. Demon wind. Uh, by Charles (laughs) Philip Moore came out in 1990, 96 minutes long. I watched this thing on flex, uh, but it looks like it's kind of fucking everywhere. Um, this movie didn't know what it wanted to be. Uh, it saw like a lot of 80s horror movies, and it was like, we're going to do all of that. Everything. Um, there's a lot of Evil Dead. There's a lot of Mirror Mirror in this thing. There's a lot of demons in this thing, like the movie Demons. Uh, not not actual demons, but there's that too. Um, 
it's all over the place. It's extremely gory. It's really campy and fun. Um, super high body count. Uh, there's like nine teenagers uh, go to a secluded cabin. Um, and, you know, they get picked off one by one by supernatural forces. And there's alternate dimensions. There's a little bit of phantasm to this thing. Um, this thing is just like 15 movies thrown in a blender with about 30 gallons of blood and just whirled all up. Whirled. Whirl. It's a whirlwind. It's a whirlwind of movies. Um, this is campy as shit. It's super cheesy. It's very cheap. Special effects are crappy in the best possible way. Um, I can't say enough about how much I enjoyed this movie. Uh, with that being said, it's not going to be for everybody. This is for people like me who like really enjoyed shitty and cheesy movies. Uh, but yeah, I, I give this thing uh, four and a half out of five. I, I loved every fucking minute of it. And I'm going to get me a copy and I'm going to watch it more watch than it. once. So, yeah, Demon Wind 1990, four and a half stars. You seen it, Kelly? You seen Demon Wind? Nope. Nope. But you did send it to me and you're like, this shit fucking is my jam. <laughs> dude, like, that, th no, this thing yeah, is moving yeah. butt like toilet tissue, dude. This thing fucking rocks. <laughs> it rocks no, like Bon yeah, Jovi yeah, and Tremors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah more on that later Kelly thinks that um kevin bacon uh in tremors was bon jovi uh just so the listeners know she was convinced it took, it took a long conversation to finally convince her and she also thought uh blaze of glory was written for tremors because they were in the desert in the i did video. no i remember the music video growing up my mom had this <laughs> like i'm trying to justify it no but my mom had this um video that she i remember growing up it was like a compilation of a bunch of fucking 80s videos there was you know uh un unskinny bop by poison was on there warren Naturally. cherry pie uh slaughter angels you know that one <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah uh, how'd that go but, um but I specifically remember the Bon Jovi video, and I swear to God, <laughs> I don't know if my memory, my memory must have been off, but I swear to God that all the clips that they were showing in that video were from Tremors, and I was just like, oh, Bon Jovi's in Tremors. That's why he did the Young video. Guns. <laughs> song was written for Young Guns. So <laughs> Chris sends me the picture of Kevin Bacon. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, is this your Bon Jovi? <laughs> yeah, we're getting a uh, we're getting custom Bon Jovi shirts made with Kevin Bacon on them. Wearing yeah, a cowboy I think hat. Our next episode might be a uh, <laughs> a uh, Tremors marathon. <laughs> oh God! You know, there's like eight of those things, right? <laughs> yeah, let's. I'm down, dude. Let's do it. Okay. When was the last I... time you watched a fucking Tremors? <laughs> Uh, right. I think the last one I watched was with Maxwell at, on Collingwood, and it was the one that took place in the Wild West. With uh, Billy Drago or whatever the fuck that guy's name is. Yes, so a yeah, long time ago, like 10 years. Yeah, I'm down for a Trevor's Marathon. But anyway. Fine. Um, <laughs> uh, talk about movie, a movie. I'm, I am. I am. I'm going to talk about actually what this is one of my favorite movies. Um, there, I don't know what it is about this movie, but it's always like held like a special spot for me. I don't I, I don't know why. This is um, 2014 spring. Uh, directed by uh, Aaron Moorhead and Justin Benson, the same people that did um, The Endless, uh, Synchronicity. What was the other one? Uh, Resolution. Okay. Um, Resolution. I think it's something like series. In the Dirt or something. Yeah, I love it all was, their uh, movies. It was a found footage movie they made during the pandemic about a, a haunting in their apartment. Uh, I I think it made my best of year end list either last year or the year before, whenever fuck it came out. I really That's one it. I did not see, but this one, this one's actually one of my favorite movies. Uh, this is Spring 2014. You can watch it on Tubi right now. I think I don't know if it's on Shutter. Doesn't say it is on IMDb, but uh, this movie follows a a guy. Uh, his mom passed away, and he's just trying to get out of America, just trying to get away. And he goes to Italy, where he meets this like beautiful beautiful girl, like right off the rip, and just kind of like falls in love with her. But, like, um, she keeps leaving at night. You know, there, there's something weird about her. Um, without getting too much into this movie, because it does, like, it unfold in a way. It, this is a body horror movie, but it's also very much a love story, you know, at the same time. 
uh it, it's very like sea creature like she leaves she's gotta keep taking this i think she takes like a pill and shit to keep it no she's gotta leave at night but yeah this movie's awesome i absolutely love this movie i highly recommend it this is a four and a half star for me what <laughs> um i've also enjoyed spring um yeah. It's a it's a good little creature feature, but it's more than that. Uh, it's it's more it of a love story at at heart, uh, uh -huh. with some aquatic horror shit. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's really good. And uh, the, the guys who make it, they they're, they haven't missed a, a single movie. Everything they make no. is interesting and good and uh, thought provoking. They definitely put a lot of thought in their movies. Um, this one feels a little different than the rest of them because usually they have a lot to do with like. Um, time loops like and dimensions and stuff like that this one kind of doesn't really follow that it's more of a uh love on the road kind of thing uh with a creature uh but yeah i mm -hmm. give that one four yeah four and a half for me um yeah a lot of their movies are very like almost sci-fi in a way this one doesn't have any of that it's just like it is more of a love story though and it's it's just like a straight up body horror so yeah <laughs> All right, uh, I'm gonna do one more. Then we'll get to late night All with right. the devil. Then let's. Do you have another one after that or no? I don't. Um. So, a friend of mine and I uh, went to the theaters, and we saw the first Omen. And I gotta tell you, I was blown away by this movie. You know, uh, prequels never land. They they're never any good. They never hit the mark. Um. But this one. I mean, it may be one of the best in the entire series of The Omen. Um, it is unbelievably good. There's some insane uh, visuals that, uh, you know, like, that will be iconic. That will be like, you know, after you see it, you'll always remember there's these one certain parts. Uh, because it's a prequel, it takes place in the 70s uh, in Rome. So you got a lot of castles and you got a lot of, like, vintage stuff going on. It has a really cool old school vibe like it kind of feels timeless like you, it doesn't feel like a new movie um especially except for like some of the special effects you know i mean our our high quality cgi or whatever uh the girl that made this uh she made that brand new cherry flavor for netflix and i really really enjoyed that and really this like one that. definitely has that tone um it's very moody it has like a, a feeling of dread throughout the whole thing like it just feels like it's just ratcheting and ratcheting and ratcheting and um even though you know where it's going to go because it is setting up for the first Omen movie, it really takes some interesting twists and turns that you do not see coming. Um, there is some really cool creature work. Uh, it's a lot more gory than I expected it to be. All in all, like I was absolutely blown away by this movie. It was probably one of the best theater going experiences I've had since um, Late Night with the Devil. Um, and I cannot recommend it enough. I, I really think it's awesome that movies like this are being made right now um and getting into theaters and getting the budget they are because i mean fucking omen prequel should have been straight to dvd with like a dog shit budget and seen by nobody kind of like some of the exorcist sequels you know uh but mm -hmm. no this this thing hit on all cylinders and i can't wait to watch it again whenever it hits uh streaming or whenever it drops because there's uh there's stuff i want to dissect now that i know where it, it goes because there's definitely some breadcrumbs they left along the way that you might not pick up the first time. But yeah, all in all, uh, I highly recommend the first Omen. It was four and a half star movie. It may be my favorite in the entire Omen series, including the original of the Omen. Um, I might like this better. I got to go rewatch the Omen, wow. but this is a fantastic fucking movie. So that was the first Omen. Uh, by the time you're hearing this, it's probably streaming somewhere, but it was in theaters when I saw it. I know fucking you have hell. Bad as fucking me about it. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You said you're you can't wait to see it again. Well, you're yeah. about to go see it again because you went without me the first time. So I'm going to drag you the second time to go see it. I with was me, on a date. Fucker. That's what she I wanted know. to see. What the fuck? I mean, you expect me to put you in front of like somebody I'm dating? Come on now. <laughs> it just sucked because we were going to go that Friday, and then you're like, "No, we'll go Sunday." And then it was just like, I was like, "Oh, cool." And then you're like, "Don't be mad at me." <laughs> I'm like fuck. 
<laughs> on Sunday. You know, I'm I was just sorry. waiting for you to get a hold of me and go see it that day. <laughs> Whatever. I forgot fine. we had made plans for it for that day, and we went and got <laughs> her and I went and got lucha tacos and went to the movies, man. It was a nice day. I'm sorry. Well, we're gonna go see it again. But uh, yeah. that's bold. That's bold to say you like it for uh, better than the first one because I'm. I'm not the only one that's been saying one. that. Is what's really crazy. I mean, like this yeah. thing feels like, like, like you're watching Rosemary's Baby. In all honesty, it really has that same vibe and that classiness and that like really inventive storytelling. And it's, I mean, it just feels like a timeless classic, but new. Fuck yes. So what are you, Rosemary's Baby, like I love, I love that sort of feel in a movie. You know, that like yeah, building and- dread. That's not like it's not just like in your face up front. You know, it just kind of builds and builds and and yeah. I, yeah. I, I mean, it, yeah. And this thing really does it, it. Yeah. Like especially with the music choices and some of the ways they filmed it, it like just really unsettles you. Even when like nothing's happening, you kind of just feel like, ugh, like this. It feels like as you're sitting there watching it, somebody's walking by with blankets of dread and just adding another blanket every once in a while. And then by the end of it, you just Ooh. feel like you're in like one of those, um, like, you know, those lead fucking blankets they put over you when they give you x-rays of your teeth or something. Yeah. You know, like the, the lead blankets are super heavy. You feel yeah. like that full of dread by the end of it. It was. That's a phenomenal. good analogy. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, it's, yeah. It's what her and I came up with after seeing it we were talking about it uh after we got back to her place and like discussing the movie you know how people do and shit and that's oh, yeah. kind of like what we came up with like because it just really just felt soaked in that shit now i'm excited to see immaculate too i hear the premise like the entire storyline uh with this movie and immaculate are basically the exact same storyline but they you know i've heard that too but i heard yeah. that uh immaculate gets a little crazier in the end Okay. Which I don't know I don't how know. this 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 thing really does some shit in it. Like uh, if you remember the origins of Damien that they talked about in the movie, that shit happens. And now for our feature presentation. So yeah, you want to get to late night with the devil? Yep. Yep. So I can finish so, uh these files. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god you're a dork <laughs> <laughs> so yeah we went and saw late night with the devil in the theater which i thought was a fantastic way to see this movie i'm really glad we went and saw it in the theaters as opposed to just waiting for it to stream on shutter i did yeah. rewatch it on shutter Same. to, to kind of reacclimate with it because it's been what like a, like two months since we saw it maybe a month and a half uh maybe a month i don't think it's been that long maybe a month I mean, it was long before we left for Jersey, and Jersey was weeks ago. It was right before we left for Jersey. Anyway. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the way to see it was in the theaters. That was really good. But I did rewatch it at home, I think, two nights ago. Uh, I watched it Shuck, Sunday. Kind of revamp and re- like, uh, re-adequate myself with it. Mm. Uh, what'd you think about Kelly? I fucking loved it. Um as far as it being a found footage, uh, I, I feel like that's more of a half and half thing because you know how it, when it switches to black and white and they go back behind the scenes, that wouldn't really be a found footage. Like somebody's filming them, but that's not part of the thing that they found. So I don't know. But, I wouldn't um, call it yeah. found footage at all. Um, just because no. it's it's presented. So there's there's a uh, an intro and kind of like a video package, like kind of setting you up for what's going to happen. And Mm-hmm. Narrated by the wonderful Michael Ironside. I fucking love Michael Ironside. Uh, it was it was cool to hear him do the voiceover, but kind of setting it up. And then after they set up, I mean, it's pretty much just here's what was broadcast that night. So it's 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 shown like an episode of television. So there is yeah. multiple camera angles and all that. So I wouldn't really call it a found footage because it is filmed like a TV show. True. You know. Yeah. It's, it's definitely got its own thing going on, and um, that's. It's very unique. It's absolutely very unique. And you don't see that in a lot of horror, like to the level that this one was, you know, not only, not only that, uh, the only time it broke that format is when they go to commercial break, it would kind of uh-huh. show you some stuff that they filmed behind the scenes and that would go into black and white and it looked different. Yeah. Uh, but for the most part, I mean, it's just like watching an episode of television that gets really fucked up. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, I absolutely love this movie. I loved the whole feel of it. I think they definitely nailed that 1970s uh, talk show vibe. I really like how it takes place on Halloween and going into the story of how this guy is trying to save his uh, failing uh, or low ratings of his late night show by trying to um, show proof of the devil on Halloween night. Like, that's just the, the most kick-ass premise for a movie, in my opinion. I, I'm a big fan of uh, devil movies, of demonic movies, you know, possession movies. You know what, this, uh, uh, you know what it kind of reminded me of? Uh, past guests of the show, um, uh, Halloween, uh, Super Halloween Megatape. Yeah! Um, that was all done in a studio on Halloween. It really had similar vibes uh, to La, Mart La Martina's movie. Uh, I can see that. Which was an awesome find. Uh, you should definitely go pick that up from him directly if you haven't ever seen it. Um, we talked about it, I believe. Yeah, we had the director on an episode. We yeah, yeah, yes, we did. Yeah. Um, one of the other things I really liked was, like, you know, like you were saying, the 70s aesthetic. Um, I really liked, you know, the 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 yellows and oranges and you know all that like it, it really mm -hmm. had a cool look uh the guy who stars in it uh david desmale desmelche or I, I i'm probably murdering this guy's fucking name don't make um, me say it he's uh <laughs> say it <laughs> hold on <laughs> pulling it up uh there it is david desmulchian desmulchian yeah he's yeah. kind of turning into like Horror royalty in my eyes. Like this dude's really picking some interesting movies. I really liked him in Last Voyage of the Demeter. Uh, did you ever get around to seeing that, Kelly? I did not. I did not. I didn't realize he was in this. Um, but you know, as far as like, I think this cast goes. I think the one that actually killed it is the girl that played Lily Indrid Torelli. That girl yes. absolutely fucking killed that role. Like, even when she's just being sweet and happy, like, she still had this absolutely creepy-ass aura about her that just, like, it, it didn't stop from, like, when she arrived on, on you know, on camera until when she left. I mean, at the end was an absolute fucking uh, chaos. I but. really I really enjoyed the smug, um, what would you call him? Like, he was like a... Uh, Skeptic. The skeptic, yeah, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Carmichael Hag. Uh, yeah. I really enjoyed uh, him. He, the guy who played him, you could tell, was just relishing being in that fucking smug. I'm gonna shit yeah. on everything you do, roll, and then and then at the end, you know, he's just like, "I will serve you." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he tries to pull out the check. Look here. <laughs> they try. He tries to give the devil a half a million dollars. <laughs> 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 but another thing that was interesting, um, and I didn't put two and two together, um, about the premise of that with the little girl uh, and her backstory of being like saved from Satanists. The cult, yeah. Uh, there's a episode of Time Suck about somebody that claimed that in real life, and it turned out to be a hoax. Um, oh Time shit! A podcast both of us enjoy, hosted yeah. by Dan Cummins. Where he That's takes personally on, my favorite podcast. Yeah, where he takes on like um interesting and weird different topics makes them fun and funny but mm -hmm. there was um a woman and the psychiatrist that wrote a book about how when she was younger she was you know brought up by all these satanists and they were doing all these spells on her and all this shit and uh it was actually what started the satanic panic in the 80s was this book and um that's actually the same backstory they gave the girl uh on late night with the devil which i i didn't pick up the first time i watched it but i picked up on this time around and i thought that was also interesting that they they rooted it in the story of what started satanic panic in the 80s uh but made it real there's you know? there's a documentary that came out like toward the end of last year on tubi that's based around that same story it's i, I need to finish it i think i fell asleep one night but it's called satan wants you but it's based around that same story that you're talking about I mean, Satan's always wanted a piece of this. You seen how you see how I'd be fucking <laughs> filling out a pair of jeans, dog. Satan's That's all Toledo hot, Chris. <laughs> Toledo hot, Chris. <laughs> molecular Lionel. <laughs> yeah, but get it right. It's molecular Lionel now. No bartender will believe me though. Uh, what else about uh, anything else you want to hit on with late night with the devil? Shit, man. Um. 
It's it was it feels like the the beginning was just like a slow build, a slow build, and then it just goes fucking a wall at the end. Um, how do you feel about like the, the whole ending story though? I, I feel there was like a deeper meaning there at the end, as far as like the Bohemian Grove and his wife's passing away and. Uh... Oh, uh, spoiler alert! Uh, what they what it's they yeah. What they um what they're saying is that he actually sacrificed his wife for fame to that's the grove. I, that's what I figured. Okay. And the grove is supposedly, you know, something that actually exists in Hollywood. Uh, you know, it's like a elite thing where they do all these fucking weird uh uh rituals and dress weird and all this shit, uh, supposedly. So, you know, they're they're making comment on that, but what they were saying was that that he was willing to give up his wife for fame and then because in, in losing her, he did get his fame, but his ma- mind state uh, let it all slip anyway, because without her, he was nothing kind of thing. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, fu- I absolutely love this movie. I give it a four and a half. Um, I love it, too. The, um, go ahead. The AI, there's like a big controversy over the AI, and I was like kind of looking into it. There was only like... Like the dancing st- skeleton stills that they kind of put in between scenes. That's really all it is. And I was also reading statements from the uh, designers and shit that worked on it. They said they made the AI. They did use AI for it, yes, but it was also manipulated after the fact. Which at that yeah. point, I'm just like, you know, I don't think it, it's... Um, that doesn't sound like it's... As a graphic designer myself, I am both terrified and... Um, fascinated by ai you know and like some of the new photoshop actually has some kind of cool like ai features but it's just like i don't know like what are the limits you know how far you can go and i don't see what they did on this movie uh really like taking anybody's job away i feel like what they did on this as far as ai goes it was more designers playing with the capabilities that are um i don't know yeah this uses another tool yeah, but the the yeah. other thing is is that people need to keep in mind. Um, this was also made before there was the big AI controversy, before the strikes and all that. You know, like they mm-hmm. this wasn't this was pre all that, so they didn't know the the shit storm that they were kind of poking at when they made it. Yeah. You know, they're they the directors said that they're on a, a unintentional apology tour with this movie, but I mean, when you watch it, it's it's just a couple small stills like i i do see why you know ai is a threat and why it could yeah possibly hurt the industry and lo- people lose jobs and all that but i think this is one of those things where it's just kind of let it slide yeah you know? same that that, that's my feelings itself. on this one uh and the movie was amazing absolutely go see it if you haven't yet um if you haven't yet i hope you didn't make it this far through the review <laughs> uh but yeah definitely go see it Four and a half. Yeah, definitely go uh, see it. Um, yeah, I give it four and a half as well. I, I have it. not yet uh, seen First Omen, or I have not yet seen Immaculate, and there's a couple other that are coming out that I'm anticipating this year. But this one, I can already see in my running for like movie of the year. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I was actually planning on watching Immaculate tonight um, after mm. I got off of this. So it seems like there's a big influx of religious horror going on right now. Uh, which I I'm think is kind of cool. Because, you know, you got Immaculate, you got First Omen, and Late Night with the Devil all coming on yep. around the exact same time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's a lot. I love me some demonic horror, man. Bring it on. Yep. Me too. But, so yep, with that being um, said... Tremors. Tremors next, bitch. God <laughs> damn it, dude. <laughs> You want to watch all these fucking things? <laughs> Let's have a marathon. Whether, dude, it's supposed to be like 80 on fucking Sunday. Let's pop up the screen outside and we'll barbecue. <laughs> anyway. <All right>. anyway. <laughs> I have a three pack of the first three. But I think, th- dude, I think there's like eight of these things now. We'll check it out. I'm not going to promise there's, Tremors. They just put a new one on Tubi like two weeks ago. It was Tremors Island. There's a new one. <laughs> Brand spanking new. Fucking a. All right. Wonder, well, I'm not going to promise. Wonder if Brown Toby will come back in that one. <laughs>
<laughs> With that being said, be on the lookout of our shop for uh, the uh, Kevin Bacon Bon Jovi shirts coming soon. Yeah, yeah. I'll have something to show on the next episode. <laughs> Y'all have a With good that, night. We are out of here. Keep it gross. <laughs> keep it spooky. Watch something crappy. You got anything to say, Kelly? Sleazy. Keep it sleazy. Easy sleaze. <laughs> right. Send nudes. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to help. I'm going to help germ sue you. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs>